In this new video with Dr. John Gray, you will discover what's the number one cure for a broken heart. Hi, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method and make sure to like, comment and subscribe to my channel so you get more juicy videos like this right into your inbox. Let's go ahead and dive right in. The loss of love is a broken heart. There could be many things to do it. Uh, I'll speak from my own experience right now. Well, first an earlier experience. When my first marriage ended, because my wife, a part of it ended, we weren't right for each other. We were in role reversal. And it, but what triggered it was her having a secret affair and falling in love with another man who she eventually married. So I was devastated. I was felt so rejected. I felt like such a failure. And so what I did during that time, fortunately, is I had the skills, the skills that I wrote right in my books, how to heal a broken heart. Mm -hmm. So what I had to do is take it personally, because I did take it personally. And another part of me, I had to find that doesn't take it personally. It's not about me. It's about her. It's not, doesn't mean that I can't find love again. So when you feel rejected, you take it personally, something's wrong with me. When the truth is nothing was wrong with me, if we stand outside of it, she wasn't right for me. And I remember when I was healing, even soon after when we broke up, I said, you know, I always will love you, but we're not right for each other. And that's why we're ending this relationship. We're just not right for each other. And people, that's what we got together is we thought we were right for each other. Our hearts were open. We were mistaken. We're not right for each other. But to be truthful, we were right for each other for that period of time. There's no doubt in my mind that we also colluded in heaven to come together to help each other at that time mm -hmm. and learn. Because I learned so much in that relationship. I learned all the pitfalls of men being too far on their female side and women being too far on their male side. And then I come back to Bonnie, who at the time was practicing how to be on her female side. And I wasn't yet ready to be on my male side, but I learned how to do it. And part of it for me was the broken heart of being rejected in my first marriage devastated me. And I did a process that I already taught in my seminars, how to heal a broken heart. And then I had a broken heart and I learned even more. So part of it is whenever anything upsets you, stress, there's emotionally to let go of that stress, you become aware of your emotions. You have to identify them. This is called emotional intelligence, being able to identify an emotion rather than say, rather than just be angry or feel hurt, identify what emotion do I feel when I'm experiencing hurt? What emotion do I feel when I'm a fe feeling I don't deserve love or I'll never find love again. Find the emotions and then go deep into the emotions. So I was very upset. I was writing her what I call a feeling letter, which is in my books, I explain the details. This is briefly it. Write out whatever you feel as if it's a terrible blaming letter to whoever hurt you. I'm angry and then go into that. Well, if I'm angry, then I'm disappointed, right? So what am I disappointed about? And then you'll feel sad. I feel so sad, I feel so hurt. And if you feel sad and hurt, you can only feel hurt if you're not afraid. See, if you're not afraid, you feel good all the time. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> but I'm afraid, some part of me is afraid, I don't deserve to be loved. I'm afraid I'll never find love again, I'm afraid. So I, I felt I wrote out my fears. And then you write out your guilt where you feel remorse. Anytime you have stress, there's always some part of you that feels guilt. And a lot of people, they don't know what they did wrong in the relationship. You see, if you don't have the knowledge of how to make a relationship work, and you don't, if you have a relationship fail. Okay, so let's just give it. If you have something fail, you don't have the right knowledge of picking a partner, communicating with a partner, sustaining romance, passion, sex, all. something's missing. If you don't know what's missing, then you can't know what you did wrong. That's why this knowledge is so important. Otherwise you'll be stuck in anger and sadness and fear, but you don't complete the healing. You have to feel the guilt. What mistakes did I make? And I'm so sorry. So to put it very simply, anytime you're upset with somebody, you're also not being loving. <laughs> anytime you get angry, you're not loving. Anytime you're disappointed with somebody, I'm so disappointed by you. 
you're, you're not loving. But it's hard for the brain to get this because the only reason I'm angry with you is because I love you. But as soon as I'm feeling angry, I'm not loving. When I'm feeling hurt, you hurt me so much. Well, when you're feeling hurt, the reason you feel hurt is you're depending on someone and they pull that away. It's like a rip. So you feel, I feel so hurt. I feel so betrayed. I feel so sad. Well, right then you're not loving. You need to get that. When we have negative emotions, we're not loving. Does that mean we shouldn't have negative emotions? No, we have them. Anytime you have a desire, a need, and it's not fulfilled, there'll be some negative emotion, but you manage it without throwing it on someone and apologize. I'm so sorry. I feel this way. I'm so sorry. I'm rejecting you back. But what people will tend to do is, well, I'm rejecting you back because you said that. I'm rejecting you back because you did that. I'm rejecting you back because you, you have to own. And then you have to go, well, what were my mistakes besides my negative emotions? That's why I have all these knowledge. Because for women, statistically, a broken heart, an ended relationship, let's say a marriage, statistically, we have those measurements. On average, women take nine years long before they get involved again, and many don't get involved again. Men, statistically, after a divorce, they're married three years later. Three years, so women are three times longer. And the reason you see so many men with younger women is because there's so many women who don't get involved again ever. Now, what's happening there? Why the difference? This was a big question for me for a long time until I understood hormones. When a man divorces, he's alone. He's not dependent on you anymore. So what happens? He's forced to be on his male side. His testosterone goes up, his stress levels go down. He can open his heart again and fall in love. Women, when they're alone after a divorce, they're independent. Now their testosterone goes up, their estrogen goes down. Because when testosterone goes up, I have to do it all myself. They can't feel I can depend on someone else to be there for me. So their estrogen stays low and you can't fall in love unless your estrogen levels double in the presence of a partner. So this is, I see so many wonderful women in their forties and their fifties. And they say, you know, I meet these nice guys. I just can't fall in love. My mind just starts picking at them, picking at them, picking at them. And all those things you're picking at are true. You know, if you were to actually investigate my house, you'd see one of the sinks doesn't work. It takes a while for the hot water to get to the bedroom. You'd see that there was some mold before on the, under the house. You'd see that there's a leaky vent. You know, you could find so many things wrong with my house, but you know what? I'm not going to change those things. I love my house. Everything's fine in my house. If I was going to sell it, I'd have to fix all that stuff, but I'm quite comfortable in my house. So I can enjoy imperfection because there's so many good things to see about my house. Same thing in a relationship. If your mind is picking your partner apart, it's you. You're not coming from a place of love and that's, you're not processing the wound. So for me, it took nine months of me going up and down, up and down, processing my pain. And what happened already in seven days, I was writing up my feeling letter to my ex-wife. I felt rejected, I was so angry. You're cheating on me, you betray me. I feel so hurt. You know, I've given you so much of my life. Now I'm afraid. I'm not even sure what I'm afraid of, but I'm angry more. And then as I'm writing, part of the instruction is keep being aware. Is there something in your past that's being triggered? And then a memory came up while I was writing. Oh, it was amazing. I remembered something I'd completely forgotten from when I was a little boy around six years old. And I was, I lost, got lost from my mother and my family. And I was, I thought I'd never get back. This was a deep, deep wound inside. And I remembered it all. Now I'm writing to my mom, being angry with my mom. How could you forget me? You know, I feel so hurt. I'm so afraid. Now I had a reason to be so afraid. I'm afraid I'll never find my mother again. I'm afraid I'll never have love again. You see, for an adult to feel I'm afraid I'll never have love again, it's really unrealistic and irrational. We all deserve love. I know that as an adult, maybe some people don't know it, but where that fear comes from, that you have to feel the fear when you're upset comes from childhood where we really don't know as a child. And I was so afraid I'd never see my mother again. And I did eventually, but the fear was there. And then feeling bad as a child, what did I do wrong? I was so stupid, I shouldn't have done this. I felt bad about that. You have to go through anger, sadness, fear, and guilt. And if you can't, you'll stay stuck in the wound forever. 
Then having done that, that's level one. Then you have to get in touch with expressing what I want, what I wish, what I need. Listen to your heart, let it come out. I wanna be loved, I wanna, I wanna have a beautiful relationship, I wanna be happy again, I wanna have full life. Express what you wish and want. Just listen to what's inside, let it come out on paper. And then imagine having shared that with this person you're upset with, write a letter from them to you. I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I understand you're angry. Have them say all the things you want someone to say to you. And in this case, I imagine a little boy, my mother's saying all these things to me. And then she says, please forgive me, I'm so sorry. Then you, you automatically go, oh, mom, I forgive you, I love you. Now you're healed. Forgiveness is the healing. You can't even find forgiveness until you know you're really angry with someone, until you know you're afraid, until you know you're hurt then forgiveness is really healing. So that's the feeling letter exercise. Then what you do having, finding that forgiveness inside, please forgive me, you go, I forgive you, I'm grateful to you, I love you, I forgive myself. And then you write, how does your love make me feel? That's the third level. So you talk about, affirm what you feel and you bring up those positive feelings and you do that about 20 times over six months. <laughs> and, and what you've done is not only let go of the painful experience in present time, you have healed something deep inside of yourself. Every breakup is an opportunity to do deeper healing. Every negative experience in your life is an opportunity to bring more light into you. That's an attitude that makes you not a victim in life, but a winner in life and allows you to find love again. Now, having said that, for women, you just have to have this mindset. I need to process my feelings, but also like with a child who falls off a horse, you put the child back on right away. Otherwise they develop a fear of the horse. Then every time they avoid being on a horse, that fear grows stronger and that fear grows stronger. So you need to get back on the horse. You can't just spend nine years not dating. You need to just say, I need to go on dates to experience that men can be safe, that I can get what I need from a man but I'm lowering my standards. I'm not looking for the soulmate. I'm not looking for the perfect person. I'm looking for some friendly companionship. I'm looking to exercise my ability to be authentic in a relationship with the opposite sex. You don't wanna create a fear of the opposite sex by avoiding them. You wanna engage, you wanna make, you have to be bold. You have to go against your instincts. Your instincts, if you've been burned, that little kid does not wanna get back on the, on the horse. No, I don't wanna do it. You pick it up and you put it on the horse. You get out there and start dating again, but lower your standards. Stop looking for the perfect person. Instead, go house shopping, okay? It's that you're not looking for the perfect house. You're just checking out all the houses. You know, one of my daughters has the most beautiful house you could ever imagine. We got the best deal. It's, in a, it's on a lake. It's right 15 minutes from San Francisco. It's got a view of the bay. I didn't even know houses like this existed. And we looked and we looked and we just said, let's just keep looking for houses and see what you like and what you don't like, trusting that one day what you like will appear. And she had all these requirements. She got very clear about how many rooms she wanted, what the view was. And then it surprised her. It was even better than she could imagine. A house that had everything she wanted, a little bit higher in the price range, but we pushed it. We made it, we made it work because she was patient and she just created a series of positive house searching events. Same thing with dating, create a series of positive dating experiences. So you're no longer associating disappointment with men. You wanna create a sense of enjoying men because if you lower your expectations, you're not gonna be disappointed. Get out there and have a good time, practice not being a people pleaser, practice learning how to receive.